Hi, I'm Trish and welcome to the sew along for the bag. So this is a free PDF pattern you can download from my website. It's in the free pattern section and um, for this you're going to need a woven fabric. A heavier woven fabric is best, maybe a 22 ounce um, canvas or um, some of the heavier craft cottons. If you wanted to use something lighter, just apply interfacing, fusible, in, fusible interfacing to the pieces and we can get started. So the, this is a really easy, um, pretty much a beginner's level sew. Um, what you are going to need is a zip. So you're going to need an 18 inch, 45 centimetre zip and uh, we can get started. So let's get started with sewing in the zip. You're going to need the zip and you're going to need the upper pieces which look like this. Now I do have two colours I'm sewing with today but I'm going to sew everything in white so I can do some contrast top stitching. We're going to sew our zip to each side of the upper piece here. Now when we're finished we need to leave a one centimetre gap which is three eighths of an inch from one side to the other. Now generally when you buy these chunkier zips they are three centimetres wide. So what that means is when we sew this in, we need to sew this zip at one centimetre. What that means practically is you need to put a zipper foot on your machine and stitch as close to this edge as you can get. And when I say as close as you can get, I don't mean like an invisible zipper. I mean more like leave one eighth of an inch. So when you're finished, you want three eighths of an inch from side to side. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to pop my zipper foot in here. We need to sew this zipper so that it ends up right side up. So take one of your pieces, place it right side down, and we are going to sew it like this. And when you're ready, sew that zip into place. And go ahead and sew the other side in and make sure the ends and the beginnings match perfectly. So when you're finished, this is the one centimetre three eighths of an inch gap I talked about. Now if you want to, you can go ahead and top stitch this down, edge stitch this down on either side. You don't need to because we are going to do it again, or we are going to top stitch this at the lining stage. If you want to do it now, it just means at the lining stage you need to make sure your stitches are stitched directly on top of the stitches you create now. So what I suggest is you do not do the stitching now and we'll move on to putting the straps in the correct place. So here are my straps. What I'm doing is replacing my zipper foot with my regular everyday foot. Now I'm not going to change my thread, you can if you want to. To create the straps we're going to fold them in half lengthwise and sew a one centimetre seam. Don't forget to back tack. Then using a safety pin or a turning tool, turn that so it is wrong sides together. So 
So repeat that for the other strap and then go to your iron and press that flat so that that seam is exactly on the fold. When these are pressed flat, what I'm going to do is just top stitch them foot width which is 6mm in from the edge but you can stitch them at whatever width you prefer. Now take a piece of chalk or a pin and we want to mark on one side of these only 8 centimeters up from the end and 8 centimeters is 3 and a quarter inches. Now take one of these straps and come to the piece we created earlier with the zip. On each of the sides there are small marks and these are placement marks for our strap. So what we're going to do is put our strap in between those marks and we're going to stitch directly on the line of stitching we just created. Now when you stitch this you need to make sure that this strap is exactly parallel to the outside edge. So we're going to stitch up as far as our mark turn and stitch down again. So stitch up to your mark, stop with your needle down in your work, lift your presser foot, turn your work, pivot and readjust and stitch across to the stitching line you created before. Stop, lift, turn and stitch back down again. Now bring that strap around so there's no twists to the same position, oh, sorry, to the position on the same side and place that down and just repeat the process. So now we have the strap on one side, just repeat that on the other side. For the next step, make sure your zip is opened up and make sure your straps are in the centre so there's no chance of them getting sewn over. And place the lower part directly on top like this. We're going to sew the two long straight edges together. So sew this seam at one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch. Then do the seam that matches on the opposite side. Now we're going to do each end of the zip. So when we do this, we just want to make sure that the zip will close for a start and that that will stitch in perfectly from side to side. Now, if you have a metal stopper, just be really careful. You might want to just stitch up and back tack and then start again on the other side. It really depends what sort of zipper you have. So making sure that is opened up and we want to make sure that is pushed all the way open and flat. And you might find it easier to stitch it from the other side
So when you've finished these ends off, what we need to do is sew these corner pieces. What we're doing is we're going to pick it up like this and match that raw edge, match the centre and sew all the way across. And when we sew this, we need to sew this with a one centimetre, three eighths of an inch seam. And we need to make sure that when we get to the centre, we have the seam here open. So you want it to sit exactly on top of each other. And we want the seam to be open. And that will just reduce the bulk and make um, a more perfect centre point. Now go ahead and repeat that for the other three corners. Right, so go ahead and open that zip up a little bit further and then turn that bag so it is right side out. And you can see it coming together now, so let's um, do the lining. Here is our lining piece. Um, now what I'd like you to do is go to the iron and press the seam here, each long edge under, by one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. So we're pressing to the wrong side. So this is the wrong side here. When you've ironed that into place, turn it over so that there is right side up and fold these sides to the centre. We're going to do exactly what we did with the upper layer. And you should see that there is a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch gap in the center. But that's going to depend on how perfect your cutting and sewing has been. And So now we're going to do the corners the same as we did earlier. So now your lining is ready to put inside the main bag. So take the bag and place the lining inside. What we're going to do is match the lining. 
and then stitch it into place. So come to this end, that one centimetre gap will sit across the end like this. And you're going to need some pins now to hold everything in the correct place. So pin each end in first. And then go ahead and pin that into place. Now you'll probably need to pin it from the right side. So when you have those pins in place, now we need to stitch that down. So it is going to take a bit of manoeuvring. It's probably easier if you semi-turn this inside out. And what we want to do is stitch from one end along the zip. And we want to catch both layers, the top and the bottom. And you want to make sure it looks really pretty um, from the top. So um, just make sure you start directly on the edge and that you're stitching is really as nice as you can make it. I'm going to try and do an edge stitch, which my edge stitch is um, maybe um, it's about two mils out from the edge. So I'd have to work that out in inches. So when you do stitch that into place, um, I put my pins in around the wrong way, just make sure you're catching that underlayer, but the underlayer won't get caught in the zip teeth and remember you've got a centimetre three eighths of an inch to play with there so you don't have to jam it all the way to the edge but one thing you do want to make sure on this side is it all looks pretty so take your time and stitch that down So once you've done that on this side, go ahead and repeat it on the other side. So there you are, the pattern is finished. I hope you enjoy this free PDF pattern that you can download from my website and the links below. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you're into Facebook, don't forget to join my pattern discussion group where you can see everyone else's sews and also get in on the latest sales and discount codes. Thanks for joining me, see you again soon.